black cake and black fruit cake are made not only in Belize, but in many Caribbean and Central American countries. The fruits are usually soaked in some type of spirits, and burnt sugar is used to give the cake its rich noir black color and that wonderful caramel flavor. Come away with me to the kitchen and let's make Belizean black fruit cake. I am doing a lot of the sous chef work before I start, all right? Because it's gonna take a little while. Now, I don't want you to think that black fruit cake is hard to make, because it, it, it really is not. It's a lot like making white fruit cake. What am I doing right here? Separating the egg yolk from the egg white. And if you saw my video that I did with um, lemon pie, you would see that I have this tool that I can use. And I separate, put the egg whites here, and the reason I dump it into one bowl first is because if I mess up and I bust the yolk, then I didn't destroy the whole batch. So this is five eggs separated, all right? This is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and I sifted it once. A whole tablespoon of baking powder, baking powder. We're gonna need one cup plus an eighth of a cup of butter. So this is two tablespoons, just in case you don't have an eighth cup measurement. This is two and a third cups of regular white sugar. Um, lemon extract this time around. I'm not putting any salt because my butter is salted, but if you are not using a salted butter, go ahead and add like half a teaspoon to maybe a teaspoon of salt. Not too much, all right? So here, instead of doing milk, what we're gonna do is grape juice, the dark one, and we're gonna need this. We, I think I call this the black thing, but it's called browning, the burnt sugar. We're gonna need this whole bottle, and this bottle is 12 fluid ounce, all right? And we're not gonna be using the, um, Look, got me? All right, so here are the fruits. I got this at the regular grocery store, and it's called Fruit Cake Mix. It has red and green cherries, pineapple, and a whole bunch of other mess, but I still went and got a stack of green cherries and red cherries because I want this for decoration on top of the cake. This flour is just some extra because we're gonna have to flour the fruits. We don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. So let's put the egg whites out the way here. I'm not going to um, start the oven yet, all right? What we're going to do is start here by adding the sugar and the butter, and then we're going to cream, all right? Remember that the measurement of butter is one cup plus one eighth, okay? And one eighth is also two tablespoons. So let me go ahead and blend with my hand mixer making sure that I'm scraping down the bowl as I go along. And then now I'm going to add the egg yolks, hopefully one at a time, but two got into the bowl right now. Blend to make sure it's well incorporated. And then here comes the last egg yolk. And I just want to make sure I scrape down my bowl. You know what I wonder, guys? How many old Belize people used to make cake like this with a wooden spoon and stir and stir? Oh my god, no, I don't think I want to eat any cake. So I'm cleaning off the beaters because I have to get them washed because we have to beat the egg whites. Now sometimes when I do this cake, I will beat the egg whites first, but I've noticed that they will fall flat from time to time if I'm taking too long to do all this. So I don't want to take a chance on that today being that I'm recording because it's, it's a lot of extra, you know, when you're recording. So let me go ahead and get this cleaned off and then when I come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do to the fruits, all right? All right, guys, I'm going to light the oven. Oh, let me make sure that people didn't leave no oil in here. You guys have that same trouble at your house where people put a frying pan of oil in the oven. <laughs> Anyways, fruits, all right? So I'm measuring out two cups thereabouts of the fruits. Let me get it in here. It's already starting to smell like Christmas. Y'all know this my Christmas apron? This is from last year when I was selling aprons. No aprons this year for sale. So, two cups of the fruits, and what we're going to do is flour it. So let's put the fruits in this beautiful shiny bowl that I got from my friend. And I know I told you guys that the fruits are usually soaked in some type of alcohol, but I'm opting not to do that because it makes it easier to flour the fruits if they're not wet with some type of liquid, all right? I'm using these tins. And I've greased and floured them and I put some parchment on the bottom. And I'm using three of these. I think I'm going to get three out of this batter right here. 
and it's really cool because they have their lids that way when we start wetting up the cake with the wine and stuff you can just put the lid on top when you're done and you don't have to worry about put the foil and the foil gets stuck to the cake yada 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 so let let's set this aside for a little while get my hands cleaned up and then i'm going to beat this egg whites to stiff peaks all right i have the hand mixer on high and it's just a matter of having the patience taking the time to just beat the egg whites let's check nope not stiff enough let's continue for just a tad more and it's ready that's better stiff peaks and we're going to set it aside so no it doesn't have to be set aside for too long you know what i don't know why i took this thing out because i still need it and you don't have to wash it this time around because it's only egg whites and what we're going to do is continue working on the batter so, we, so far we have butter, sugar, and eggs, and the extract, right? So now what we're going to do is mix the baking powder in. If you were doing the salt, we would add the salt now. Have a big whisk right here. Whisk that really well. Then we're going to open our burnt sugar. And we're going to go alternately with the flour and the burnt sugar. Finish this whole bottle before we do anything with this, all right? So let's get that done. I like to add the ingredients in increments of thirds. So I'm just eyeballing about a third of the dry ingredients. And then I'm just getting it wet with the batter because I don't want the flour to go flying everywhere. And then I blend. And then now I add some of the wet, which is the burnt sugar. And then just continue blending. And then I'm going to add some more of the dry ingredients to the mixture and get it wet again before I blend. So you guys get the idea, right? Just back and forth. Let me go ahead and get this open. And then I want to measure four ounces of the grape juice. And you need the dark one because you want to keep the cake dark, all right? Sometimes I use orange juice too. Four ounces thereabouts. And then I'm gonna pour it in this bottle to wash it out. Kind of like what the father do with the wine when they go for communion. Rinse up the thing. <laughs> and then we're gonna pour. Mmm, that smells delicious. Let me use my hand mixer to make sure that this is well incorporated. A lot of people use stout to make the cake instead of the grape juice, but I use the grape juice because that's what my Aunt Grace used, and I think it makes the cake taste a little bit sweeter than if you use the stout. So it's only four ounces of the grape juice, and it's all in the batter now and well incorporated. So let me go ahead and take care of my fruits. I'm just going to go ahead and shake off the excess flour off the fruits through this strainer. If I had soaked the fruits in some type of alcohol, it would be so difficult to do this because the flour would not come through the strainer as easily as this. So let me go ahead and add my egg whites, my beaten egg whites to this beautiful bowl. And then to this, I'm going to add the fruits. And the reason why we're doing all these steps is because we want to make sure that the fruits are floating throughout the whole cake from top to bottom and not just resting on the bottom of the cake, all right? So let me go ahead and fold. And then now I'm going to go ahead and add it to my batter in increments of two. Let me gently fold this in. And for folding, you're kind of like chopping in and then just kind of turning the whole thing over with the spatula. That's the best way that I can describe folding. So as soon as this is well incorporated, I'm going to add my second portion. I forgot that I had a folding spatula. See the odd shape? This is supposed to make it easier to fold. So let me switch out to this and gently fold. Yeah, it's working a lot better. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my three tins. And I've noticed that the two round tins are really tall. 
They're taller than the tins that I used in the past when I'm making the black fruit cakes. So I have to be careful that I don't use up all my batter and not have any left over for the rectangular shaped uh, tin. So let me grab that. Pour the batter in. And then just eyeball it to make sure that I'm putting even amounts in the three tins. Let me go ahead and pat each tin down to make sure that they're level. And then into the oven they go for about 90 minutes. The oven is up to temperature at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're going to know they're done when you test it with a toothpick or a skewer. If it comes out clean, then you know they're done. Let me find space for my third one. And it's five minutes later, so let me go ahead and release the cake from the sides of the tin. And then dump them out onto the cooling rack. Peel off my parchment paper. Let me get the second round one. And I put the parchment paper because I don't want the cake to give me any kind of trouble to come out the tin, all right? And then let's do the third one, the rectangular one. Pull the paper off. Now, this is the next day and I've decided to do another batch of cake. So I've beaten my egg whites and I'm adding my flowered fruits. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this into my batter. The reason that I've decided to do the two batters is because, one, I want to give away some of the cakes to my aunts. And two, I want to go ahead and just split the batter into the two big pans and not do the third the rectangular one. I want the cakes to be thicker or taller. So just let me go ahead and fold my fruits into the cake and then dump it into the two tins, grease and floured and, ha and it has parchment paper on the bottom, okay? Look how thick it is. Get it in. Now these are gonna need two hours, not 90 minutes, okay? But I'm setting it for 90 minutes, but I already know I, I'm gonna need more. Now they're done. Let me release them from the side, dump them out. So now I have five cakes, but two of them are a little bit flatter than these two. See? See the difference in size? Now Joe's going to start wetting them down with some wine. A lot of people use rum. I prefer to use wine. Again, I don't like the cake to be too bitter. But let me go ahead and cut into this. This is one of the big ones. Let's see, guys. It is so dark. Come on, camera, focus. See, the fruits are scattered all throughout. They're not just resting on the bottom. It's moist. See, look at the fruits. Yes. This is what we're looking for. Let me cut the small one. Well, the flatter one, the one that we did the day before. And let's see. Just perfect. The fruits are spread all over the cake from top to bottom. It's been three days since I made the first batch of cake right here. And two days since I made the second batch. And Joe has only wet the cakes one time with the wine. Now, you can wet your cakes with rum, but I prefer the wine because it tastes a little bit sweeter. Now, I don't want you guys to come back and say, Barbara didn't make any rum cake because I didn't call it rum cake. I call it Angris's black fruit cake. I did not soak the fruits in any type of alcohol because I find that when the fruits get wet, um, it's kind of hard to flour it and it's kind of hard to get it into the cake and make it not sink to the bottom, right? My main goal when I'm making any type of fruit cake white cake or black cake I want to make sure that the fruits are scattered throughout the cake like this take a look at this right here because I feel like that's better that's just my thing right so I have five cakes Aunt Elita Aunt Jenny cousin Effie and then these two will stay right here for me to serve when people come to visit for the Christmas holidays. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Share it for me. I don't know where you can get the burnt sugar. I'm totally out. I'm going to have to hit up daddy to find out where we could get the burnt sugar. In the meanwhile, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys again next video. Bye-bye. You guys know I cannot end the show 
without tasting a little bit, even if it's some crumbs, all right? Mm. Mm. You don't even know what you're missing. Mm. It's so delicious and so moist. You guys try it, okay? Say hello to my mother. Hi, everybody. This morning with one local family. Look at it. 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 Look